we work with people. Mm -hmm. We really don't do anything on our own. Yeah. So Giving Hearts Day, we work with charities and we help them grow in their capabilities to engage the community in supporting their cause. Ooh. Realize when people give on Giving Hearts Day, they give to 2.3 causes. Mm -hmm. So when the opera brings people into Giving Hearts Day, their network, mm -hmm. they give to the Humane Society mm -hmm. or they give to the Family Health Care Center or they yeah. give to hospice or they... Ooh, this is good. And so we don't do Giving Hearts Day on our own. Yes. We help work with charities to host the day. Mm -hmm. We buy advertising. We have the technology platform. But at the end of the day, the charities do all the work yeah. uh, engaging people to support their cause. Mm -hmm. So we like to say the charity with the most friends wins. Oh. Now, that's, <laughs> okay. that's a little humor. Yes. That's a little humor. But you Hello, hello, professionals. My name is Rico Aladdin, and I am the founder of Professional Lunch. My guest today is a big guest. It's a big deal to have him on the show. Pat, welcome to the show. Great to be <laughs> with you, Rico. I've really been looking forward to this. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, DMF is such, you know, is doing such a wonderful job in the community, supporting, supporting, championing all the other nonprofits who are trying to solve problems in the community. So before we get into the conversation, because today we're going to talk about everything, you know, including giving hearts. Is there a time limit to this <laughs> interview? We will just keep it going. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But you, we, before we go into giving hearts day, because that's around the corner, they are two months away. Tell the professional launch audience a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, I grew up here in Fargo, uh, mm -hmm. went to the Catholic schools, then I went up to UND. I know that's sort of a swear word in this <laughs> wonderful NDSU uh, Bisonville uh, station that we have here. This is really quite a this is quite a setup. Yep. And thank you for giving me a tour, and mm -hmm. and the people here are tremendous. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I went to UND and then went to law school, and and then I I practiced law for a few years here in Fargo for a great law firm, and then I went out to Bismarck and uh, was hired to be the general counsel and deputy director of North Dakota Work Comp. And then I, uh, the person that hired me left about 60 or 90 days after I got there. She's a wonderful, gifted person that gave me that opportunity. And so a year later, I was appointed as a young person to be the executive of the North Dakota Workers' Comp Bureau. So I spent six and a half years in Bismarck understanding uh, the law and legislation and how to operate a workers' comp insurance company. <laughs> And I know professional lunch is about mentors. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I've been blessed with so many wonderful mentors uh, along each stage of, of my career. In fact, that's been, I think, one of the one of the best things I've ever had. You know, growing up is just wonderful mentors throughout life. Many of them mm -hmm. uh, that I still call on for advice. And so, in 2000, I started at DMF, and then in 2004, we created. Uh, the Impact Foundation. So mm -hmm. 2000, we started DMF 2004 Impact Foundation, and that was designed to operate an institute to teach nonprofit leaders and fundraisers how to be extraordinary at building teams to uh, impact the community. Mm -hmm. So we do training, we do education, you know, we host seminars, we do all sorts of things because we ultimately believe people like you and all the folks that we work with have an unlimited potential. We really believe that, and we're just scraping the surface yeah. as to people's true potential, and that's how mentors you know, are so important to all of us to, to teach us some wise things that they've learned, mm -hmm. to also put us in check when we're off course, yes. you know, to be there for us. So uh, DMF and Impact really believe, and we also have a partner, Alex Stern Family Foundation, in the, the long-term investment in these capabilities of charity leaders, friend raisers, boards of directors. And uh, I'm telling you, it's been a, a complete blessing to be a part of these uh, charities' lives. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I get to work with the best of the best. Wow. So the charity <laughs> leaders, boards of directors, donors, you know, running uh, two different foundations with a tremendous team at DMF and Impact Foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to say the secret is to surround yourself with people that are much better, sharper, faster, um, and and uh, able to pull pull it off yeah. than you are. 
And mm -hmm. we really have had that blessing with all those involved in. I know we want to talk about Giving Hearts Day. <laughs> yes. And I wanted to comment no. that you're dressed for Giving Hearts Day <laughs> yes. today. And I wanted to thank you for being in the spirit. <laughs> no problem. You have infectious enthusiasm. <laughs> that's, oh, man. And that's, thank you for having that. I put uh, my button on, but yes. I'm not nearly as well dressed <laughs> as you are, Rico. Thank you. So thank, thank you again yes. for having me. Hopefully that got you up to speed with yes. sort of where we are. Yes, you know, you know, you talking about this, I see a trend. It's like throughout your career, you are helping people. So tell me a little bit about when you were uh, appointed in um, the first job that you mentioned with the Bureau. Uh, yep. Yeah, so how, how was that? What were well, you I was there? given a tremendous opportunity as a young lawyer <laughs> to help uh, as to become the deputy director and general counsel for the North Dakota Workers' Comp Bureau. Yep. And it was an opportunity of a lifetime. I was yeah. young, single. Uh, you know, just a baby lawyer, just a few <laughs> years out of, out of law school, and yeah. I worked for a great law firm here in Fargo. And so the idea was an opportunity of a lifetime to learn mm -hmm. from so many people that really understood legislation, testifying on legislation, uh, the ins and, out of, of, ins and outs of workers' compensation, mm -hmm. and how we could really reform a system that was $240 million in the red. Mm -hmm. We figured there's only one way to go, and that's up. Yep. You know, and that's a little humor in <laughs> yes. it, but uh, one of the things I learned early on is that you simply need to ask people for help. Yeah. So uh, I was put at place uh, with a role that I really had to prove myself. Mm -hmm. I was just a young, young kid, so I asked tons of people for help. Yeah. And I really think that set me up uh, for later not being afraid to tell when you don't know something. Mm -hmm. When you don't know the answer to something, somebody else does. Yes. And that's why we live in a community. You know, that's why you know, we help nonprofits is because we want to help everyone grow mm -hmm. and become extraordinary at producing results. So that was an opportunity of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was young and single, had no kids yet. And so I you know, put 12 to 80, 80 hours a week, you know, wow. a day, it seemed like, I'm kidding. But uh, <laughs> you know, it, it was, I was like SpongeBob, okay. you know, learning, soaking it up like a, like a sponge. Yeah. And I'm still learning. Yeah. You know, every day we can only strive you know, for a better day because yeah. we're all human. Yeah. So, uh, but back to the excitement of, of charities, uh, I was uh, presented with the opportunity to lead DMF uh, in the year 2000. And so I moved mm -hmm. from Bismarck uh, to Fargo in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And another tremendous set of uh, people that I got to befriend and mm -hmm. ask for their help. And that was my DMF board. Mm -hmm. uh, and then later we appointed and, and uh, established Impact Foundation and a board of directors. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, throughout, throughout my life, I've liked to surround myself with really smart people that see things that, that we don't see. Yeah. And that's the benefit of being on a team. Mm -hmm. Everybody has superpowers. Yep. And the job is to assemble them where we get to share each other's superpowers in, in service to the community. Yes. And that's ultimately mm -hmm. what, what, what brings us so much joy and excitement and fulfillment, mm -hmm. you know, for this role. Because charities are phenomenal. Yeah. And they really want to learn how to do good much better than they're doing it today. Because mm -hmm. the stakes are high. Yeah. We have hunger. We have homelessness. We have children. Addiction. Look, Addiction, yes. terrible yes. addiction. Mm -hmm. We have technology that's a drug today mm -hmm. rather than a tool. Yeah. And people are addicted. We have a loneliness, a, a depression, an anxiety epidemic happening you know, across the land. So we mm -hmm. really need to unite people yeah. uh, to do good in those areas. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned that you asked for help because you know this show is about giving uh, early career professionals a window into the careers of successful ones yes. so that they can learn. They can learn about their challenges. They can learn about their success. And being able to ask for help, sometimes uh, young professionals are hesitant on doing that. But if they can hear that you say that, and even some of the guests that come on the show, they say that also, then they will, they will be doing just that. So now you mentioned Impact Foundation a couple of times. Impact Foundation and Dakota Medical Foundation are two different foundations. They are. Can you make the difference for the professional lunch yes. audience? Yes. Uh, Dakota Medical Foundation came from Dakota Hospital, which mm -hmm. a group of physicians and community members got together in the early 1960s. Oh. I was born in 65, so this was before <laughs> I was born. Wow. But shortly before, they opened the doors mm -hmm. and built this community hospital on South University Drive called Dakota Hospital. Mm -hmm. Years and years and years of 
of taking care of patients and families and people in this community. Uh, I mean, thousands of babies, mm -hmm. you know, being delivered. Yep. Uh, state of the art procedures for uh, orthopedic uh, processes, etc. Half of it was sold though in 1994, and the other half in 1998. So all those dollars, and there's probably 125 million dollars in our endowment today. Mm -hmm. All those dollars are used then to invest in helping people improve health and quality of life across that patient service area. Yeah. So we lead Giving Hearts Day. We lead Lend a Hand Up. Mm -hmm. So Giving Hearts Day, 24 hours of giving, over 500, now this year over 600 charities involved. Wow. $165 million has been raised through Giving Hearts Day since 2008. Uh, just think of last year, $26 million raised by charities yeah. with over uh, 90,000 different donations. Mm -hmm. So across charities from Williston to Crookston to Wapaton to Fargo-Moorhead to Jamestown, Bismarck-Mandan, Dickinson, uh, Detroit Lakes, Fergus Falls, you know, that service area has grown. It started mm -hmm. just in Cass and Clay County, you know, wow. back in 2008. Yep. And what I always want to mention when I say, uh, when I finish the DMF and Giving Hearts Day, at least for purposes of this question, <laughs> Gina Pinovich, it was her idea to start Giving Hearts Day. Yeah. So I, I got to say that you also, you know, have to go with great ideas. Yes, yes. You know, when you have a staff, you know, yeah. teammate, and yeah. she's still our teammate, she runs Lend a Hand Up. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, it's changed the whole trajectory of the face of the planet of, of Fargo, Moorhead, North Dakota, Minnesota, and our role in giving yep. and volunteering and serving. And she also runs this Lend a Hand Up program, mm -hmm. and then I'll get to impact. But Lend a Hand Up helps, we help volunteers raise money mm -hmm. for people that have medical catastrophes. Oh. So starting in 2008, February was the first fundraiser, over 20 million has been raised for families that suffer medical catastrophes. Medical expenses are the number one cause of bankruptcy. Wow, medical yeah, expenses. I did not know that. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's huge. So what helps that healing process is a group of c concerned people, family members, friends, throwing a benefit for their loved one, for the person they love at their darkest hour, you know, when life is sometimes hanging in the, in the wings. Yeah. So Lend a Hand Up works with those volunteers to help them. We have an auction tool, we have an online uh, giving platform, and then we add a 20% boost. So if you raise 25,000, we give another 5,000 to that family. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal. And today, of course, technology makes it, you know, with the auction tools and mm -hmm. things. Impact Foundation was created also so we could serve other things beyond that health-related mission. Okay. So we can serve the zoo, mm -hmm. the opera, you know, we could do some other things, but we also then, we run an institute. So we have an active uh, sequence of training, education, and coaching. And it works hand in hand with Giving Hearts Day, yeah. because Giving Hearts Day is about teaching charities to fish mm -hmm. and us creating the most generous, healthy region on the planet. Because yes. we think that charities tr play a tremendous role in providing leadership and engaging the community in improving health and quality of life. Oh, wow. So for instance, uh, uh, the emergency food pantry mm -hmm. does a great job. It has a wonderful board of directors. It has to raise money to operate this, this massive food distribution network. You know, our values are we don't want any neighbor amongst us suffering f for lack of food. Yeah. We really don't. Addiction is more complicated, mm -hmm. but food, clothing, shelter isn't complicated. Yeah. So we shouldn't have, in today's day and age, in the most wealthy region on the planet, we should have no one wanting for food, clothing, and shelter. Wow. The other ones are more complicated, you know, addiction, anxiety, depression, you know, other health-related things. Mm -hmm. So the Institute was designed to teach people how to become extraordinary at leading nonprofits to, uh, to accomplish the greatest good possible. Yeah. And as you know, and I know, that's a journey. Oh, yeah. That is a journey. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly looking for better ways to help charities become much more than they are today mm -hmm. in service to our communities. Yes. And it works. Yes. Because people are magnificent, remarkable, and have unlimited 
capabilities. Yeah. So we think we're just scraping the surface. <laughs> we we really do. That's good. That's so that good. tells you a little bit why Impact, mm -hmm. you know, was formed. Tells you a little bit about yep. Giving Heart Stay. Yep. Tells you a little bit about Lend a Hand Up. Yeah. Uh, does that give you? Oh yeah, absolutely. So that's you know, I just wanted to give uh, you know the audience uh, an idea of when I say that I have a, it's a big deal guest that I have on the show today. I want them, I want them to understand that, and you painting the picture for them with everything that Dakota Medical Foundation is doing and Impact Foundation is doing is uh, it's massive. And and one thing you'll note mm -hmm. a common theme mm -hmm. through that is that we work with people. Mm -hmm. We really don't do anything on our own. Yeah. So Giving Hearts Day, we work with charities and we help them grow in their capabilities to engage the community in supporting their cause. Oh, this is good. And so we don't do Giving Hearts Day on our own. Yes. We help work with charities to host the day. Mm -hmm. We buy advertising, we have the technology platform, <laughs> but at the end of the day, the charities do all the work yeah. uh, engaging people to support their cause. Mm -hmm. So we like to say the charity with the most friends wins. Oh, now, that's, okay. that's a little humor, yes. it's a little humor, <laughs> but you realize when people give on Giving Hearts Day, they give to 2.3 causes. Mm -hmm. So when the opera brings people into Giving Hearts Day, their network, mm -hmm. they give to the Humane Society mm -hmm. or they give to the Family Health Care Center or they yeah. give to hospice or they give to TNT Fitness, mm -hmm. and it works the same. Yeah, yeah, they bring in, they give to the opera yeah. or the zoo. Yes. So people don't just give to one cause. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we live in a very generous region, yes. and, and we're super blessed for mm -hmm. that. Lend a hand up only works with the volunteers mm -hmm. that are raising money for their friend yeah. or family member that suffers a medical catastrophe. Wow. So we work by and through others, mm -hmm. never on our own. Yeah, it's because that's our multiplier. Mm -hmm. Because of again that unlimited potential of people to do good for one another if they could have a better strategy, mm -hmm. better t tactics, better uh, skill sets, you know, mm -hmm. that we help them practice. We're teaching boards today how to be high impact boards. Mm -hmm. We wrote a book on, on high impact boards so that organizations could realize that, that huge potential if they aim much higher mm -hmm. than, they, than they're aiming today. So if you're a board member, what's your job, we ask. They, they say, they kind of look at me like, <laughs> well, it's to have bold dreams for the organization, mm -hmm. it's to deliver brilliantly, and it's to refuel your burning desire to serve. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's our formula. Yeah. Bold dreams, brilliantly delivered, with a burning desire to serve others equals extraordinary impact over time. Mm -hmm. So if you aim higher, mm -hmm. you'll end higher. Yes. If you don't, sometimes we don't even have a clear aim. <laughs> So we need to have a clear aim, and sometimes we just need to reframe so that, so that we can reboot if, yeah. if we've had a tough year, if we've had setbacks. Mm -hmm. you know, so we also teach that the obstacle is the way. Wow. The obstacle can be the way. Mm -hmm. Instead of freezing up, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe it's the way. Yeah. Maybe it unleashes a whole new direction when the obstacle, because if you're aiming for the moon. Yeah, you will let him on this, among the stars, that's yep. true. <laughs> and you're gonna have obstacles. <laughs> wow, you know, you, you know, this is the beauty of talking. Every time I meet with you, you know, I come out, you know, it's just, I feel Confused? refreshed. Confused? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> So the thing is, yeah. So twenty two. You've been to, at DMF now for two decades. Yep. Now tell me about uh, a little bit of how when you first started. How was it? How was your yeah. you know your first maybe year on the job? Well, uh, again, I, I think that I had the experience to uh, be um, not be bashful about asking for help. Okay. <laughs> so I don't think I knew what what I was doing. Yeah. For, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think that every young person should know it's okay mm -hmm. because you only are the experience that you have and the education that you have up until right now. Mm -hmm. So we are who we are based on everything that's gone on up until we got to this interview. Yes. Right. Yes. And so when you're young, you lack confidence because your your data set of experience is is slimmer yep. than someone that now I'm 57. Mm -hmm. So I, I, can, I can draw upon so many more experiences, but I would have to say that the one that I keep going back to is I still ask people for, for help. <laughs> okay. 
and and so that would be the that would be the other common denominator. We okay. have to do these sort of goofy exercises, mm -hmm. and they say, well, what are your superpowers? And you know, so then we have to. People don't like to talk about them, but mine probably is that I don't give up and that I I'm fearless in asking you for help. Wonderful. And how could I help you? Mm -hmm. So I would say the board. The boards that I've surrounded myself, when I, the younger version of Pat, mm -hmm. I had a great board. And so I went and asked them, you know, where should we go with Dakota Medical Foundation? What do you see as our vision? What do you see as our greatest potential and possibility? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you could travel any road. You could decide to do anything with yep. a general health, you know, we're here to improve health and quality of life. So I've worked, you know, a long time with my board and I still do today. Mm -hmm. So that brings us, you know, to something new we're talking about today is healthy technology use. Yeah. Yep. So it's the idea that screen time mm -hmm. or too much screen time has devastating consequences on our mental and physical well-being. Mm -hmm. And most people, if they're spending too much time on their screen, are addicted. And so this digital screen device, instead of being a tool, becomes a digital drug. Mm -hmm. And so that's something new. And, and yeah. frankly, I got that from asking our board members, what should we do? People are struggling. Suicides are as high as they've ever been. 60% of people lack purpose and meaning. Wow. I mean, there's some really tough statistics. Mm -hmm. Many people in high school have thought and contemplated ending their life. We have anxiety that's through the roof. We have an obesity epidemic. You know, we have all these things trending in the wrong direction. Yeah. Yet we need to remain hopeful. So if we're to be leaders, we have to be, you know, illuminating the situation and then mm -hmm. he helping gather people to provide solutions. So we brought in that Anna Lemke. Yes, that event. Oh, my goodness. And you it were was, at the event. Yes, what did you think of that event? The event was wonderful, especially for the stats that I get to see around high school students. And as you know, they are the future. They are. You know, so if they, we are losing them, if we are losing them, we are in big trouble. We are. Right? So because they are the future nurse, they are the future doctors, they are the future lawyers, the future police officers that will serve the community so I really like the fact that I talked to um, I, you know to her after Dr. Lemke yeah Dr. Lemke after uh, uh, the after we, the event and I asked her what are some of the things that parents can do to help uh, the student the, the, their kids yes and I think that is the most interesting thing because if the parents can help and the school are aware of this, maybe yes. they can find a way around those, those bad stats that we are seeing. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. we produced magnets mm -hmm. that have the 12 tips that you can put on your refrigerator. Oh, Every okay. parent should have these on their refrigerator, and you should contact Dakota Medical if you'd like them. We'd mm -hmm. be happy to give them for free. Yeah. So we've ordered thousands more. Wow. They went, they went right away. So I, tips on how to prevent kids from becoming addicted to their devices. We essentially need to look for ways to remove ourselves mm -hmm. from our smartphone and our digital devices. It's not going away, but we just need to not be addicted to them. Yeah. And we need to get people more in with humanity mm -hmm. rather than in with technology on a regular on a regular basis man on that note this is a, a good spot to take a break here yes. <laughs> you know this associate with uh, get people more acquainted with humanity instead of technology yes wonderful i love it we're gonna take a short break here when we come back we'll talk about uh talk to a uh, pat about some of the things that he loves about his work but more importantly we'll talk about uh giving hearts day we'll be right back We are back. We are at the Bazin Information Network studio at NDSU today. My guest is the executive director of the Dakota Medical Foundation, Pat Trainer. Welcome back, sir. Great to be back. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, we get. this is the part of the conversation we usually talk about, some of the things that you love about what you do. And I know that you love what you do. So I do. please tell the professional lunch audience, what do you love about what you do? Well, first of all, it's quite challenging. <laughs> you know, what, what we're faced with is questions like, how could we get over 100,000 people giving and volunteering on Giving Hearts Day? Yeah. How could we get 
way more people helping people that are struggling with a medical diagnosis, you know, through Lend a Hand Up. Um, you know, all the things we do are, are challenging, but in a good way in service to others. Those are, those are serious questions, but they're also quite joyful when you think, think about the good that yeah, can be come caused. Yes. Uh, you, those are meaningful. Mm -hmm. So I would say that you know, I'm super blessed that I'm in a meaningful role mm -hmm. to work with wonderful people that are all committed to the same you know, ideals of helping and serving others in a much better way or more effective way than we're currently doing so. So I know we talked a little bit about Giving Hearts Day. Yep. Well, how would you get a half million people giving and serving <laughs> through Giving Hearts Day? I mean, we have 700, 800,000 people in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. We have another three, 400,000 in our Minnesota service area. How could we engage way more folks mm -hmm. in helping one another? Yep. Because ultimately what, what we operate are platforms to serve people. Yes. So it brings out, Lend a Hand Up brings out the best in people to help neighbors in need. Mm -hmm. Giving Hearts Day is a platform that brings out the best in people to help charities do good for those they serve. Wow. So, you know, the, what brings me great joy is that challenge and then asking people for help to, to figure that <laughs> yes, out yes. It, much better than we've figured it out thus far. So yeah. it is totally a journey. Wonderful. A journey worth pursuing. Wonderful. You know, Giving Hearts Day is right around the corner. It uh, is. It's about, you know, about two months, two or three months out. But everybody now is working on it. It's preparing for that big day. Yes. So what's the story behind Giving Hearts Day? Tell the professional audience a little bit about the story behind it. Well, what's so exciting, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier yeah. you know, in our discussions, mm -hmm. is the story that it was created. Mm -hmm. The idea was from my, my teammate. Yeah. That, that's extraordinary. Gina Pinovich. And she is a, still a successful leader at DMF, but mm -hmm. she runs... Uh, Lend a Hand Up, which mm -hmm. is a subsidiary that we created just for Lend a Hand Up. Yeah. So that helps people uh, that are struggling and their friends to uh, help them in their recovery because they've been financially mm -hmm. devastated. Usually they can't work and they need help. And we mentioned earlier that that's the number one cause of bankruptcy. So mm -hmm. I, I think that those are those are things uh, that tell the story that's pretty unique, yep. you know, that mm -hmm. it's it's an idea of a teammate. And I will be honest that we would have never imagined where Giving Hearts Day is today, mm -hmm. back in 2008, you know, when we yeah. thought, I think we might be on to something here, yeah. <laughs> you know, with, with 40 charities participating, 400,000 yeah. plus uh, mm -hmm. raised, and that included our match, mm -hmm. and 1,500 uh, contributions. And we didn't know in our system at that time the difference between a donor and a donation. So if you're a donor, you might give to two, three, four causes. Yeah. We didn't have, we just, there were 1,500 donations oh. <laughs> in that first year. Now we're a little better, yeah. you know, but that was 2008. Yeah. So I would say that what's exciting is not only where we are, we should celebrate and be grateful mm -hmm. where we are because we had different Giving Heart Day directors. We've had different staff, you know, at DMF and Impact Foundation. And what I would like to say is I'm grateful for all of them. Mm -hmm. And all of them have helped DMF to, to where it is today and Giving Heart Day. Uh, our partner, Alex Stern Family Foundation, that also is another foundation that helped us create the Institute wow. at Impact Foundation. Mm -hmm. So I would say that we have much to be grateful for, for the story behind Giving Heart Day because Alex Stern Family Foundation and DMF created Impact Foundation and this institute to help charities grow exponentially because we believe that's the best, one of the best multiplier strategies mm -hmm. is to help people grow in their capabilities to serve mm -hmm. and guide these organizations to extraordinary impact. And with Giving Heart Day, it helps other charities because a successful charity brings in donors that give to another charity yes. that they never heard about. Yes. And so it really spreads kindness, joy, love, you know, across all these charities. And by the way, they form networks yeah. in the training. Mm -hmm. So they learn from one another. Yes. They learn what works for hospice might be helpful to the family health care center. Mm -hmm. 
what works for Shiloh Christian School in Bismarck might be helpful for Oak Grove yes. here in Fargo or mm -hmm. vice versa. Yeah. So we're building a network of people in charities, uh, in charity leadership positions to grow from each other. Yes. And, and that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You know, we were not meant to be isolated. We were meant to be in community mm -hmm. with one another. That's how we learn. Yes. We learn, we grow from one another. Mm -hmm. And so we, Impact and DMF, uh, act as a hub for people to exchange ideas. Yes. There are no dumb ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we want a free exchange of I ideas because it, we recognize this is a journey about just getting better, yep. getting better, mm -hmm. and there'll be experiment, there'll be failure, and we'll need to pick each other up, <laughs> yes. you know? Yes. And that's important. Yes, that's important. So, you know, last week I have uh, former state senator uh, Tim Flacco yeah. here. Great, he, he great was, human being. And he, at the end of this show, he has a clip. Jeff, do we have that clip? Uh, we can play it uh, for um, Pat because he was talking about you and giving her day. He even mentioned Gina in yep. it. And he really highlights your leadership there. Jeff, do we have the clip? Now we get to the last two questions. Of the Let's show. see if Jeff yeah, has it. Yes, there it yes. is. Because Giving Hearts Day has been there. He is. Like Giving Hearts Day. He's wearing his green blazer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah by, so you know, Pat Trainer was the head of that. Yeah. Met him in Bismarck. One of my relationships there that carried over into Fargo. But He's my guest. Funny because I, I <laughs> this always give her credit. He was talking and it's about really great because and great leaders surround themselves. Listen with to your team and give Lisa a chance. Uh, Gina a chance to really uh, to in promote the idea, so that was really cool. I well, you know, I apologize that we don't have the sound there, but uh, uh, the episode will be out uh, this week on Wednesday. So definitely that clip, I really want you to hear. It. Yeah, he I'd love really, to hear it. Yeah, he was. He's really, a uh, he's just a remarkable yeah. individual. He's got great experience. Mm -hmm. He'd give you his left arm. Yeah. <laughs> he's just a very yeah, he very. Was he's a really, servant I mean, leader. Yeah, we have great, you know, we, it was a great show. We, you know, he, I'm so glad that he was on. And uh, especially because, you know, when he, when people men give people credit, uh, other people credit for what yes. they do, I really appreciate that. So I wanted to have that clip. But well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, you know, um, you have left, uh, uh, led um, DMF for over two decades from bringing nonprofits together to raising funds. Tell me about your leadership style because you have surrounding yourself with uh, great people that gives great ideas. What is your process of, to put together a good Well, team? I would say that as you grow mm -hmm. in your understanding of who you are and mm -hmm. why you're here, I would say that it's evolved. Mm -hmm. I, certainly, mine yeah. has evolved where I realize my role needs to be much more about growing those around me mm -hmm. than it does about me. Yeah. So it needs to be much more about building others' capabilities on my team and consciously mm -hmm. spending time doing that yeah. and making sure I'm providing opportunities for those around me to grow. Yeah. So experiential learning, giving people opportunities that mm -hmm. they otherwise wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. So the younger ones that are newer in their roles get more opportunities and mm -hmm. then some other ones that haven't for a while, making sure they get opportunities mm -hmm. to present to do a paper, to do uh, some research on a particular project that we're trying to become more proficient. Like if we're going to give a training on mm -hmm. healthy communication, mm -hmm. we need to find out who, who out there does that. Yeah. There are several that do it and they're all quite good. So we need charities and we need our organization to become better at communicating. Yes. We all do. Yes. You know, the reason why I ask that is because, you know, picking up on the idea that Gina has, Gina has, is really, Jeff, again, can you put that uh, slide up that has the, uh, you know, that shows, you know, the numbers. This is one of them. Yes. $26.1 million last year in donation. And now for a total, since 2008, there's another graph that I think Jeff might show yeah. that show the audience really. There it is. This graph right there is something that everybody can admire to see the progress yes. that you have made. Yeah, and, and I'd say we. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I, the team, I really the, would. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, so, meaning all the charities, mm -hmm. all these donors that yeah. give every year. Uh, that we 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 have to stop and celebrate mm -hmm. the good news mm -hmm. 
of the generous people that surround yes. us. Yes, yes, you know, so, but again, under your leadership and the team at Dakota Medical Foundation, and also all, t uh, the one piece that I would really want to uh, acknowledge is the fact that you see a great idea and then you improve it over time yes. that gives you the result that you have today. And that's remarkable. And that's yeah. something that I really wanted to acknowledge uh, for the professional launch audience who, are, uh, who may not be familiar with uh, Giving Hearts Day and how big of a deal it is so that they can know and that's yes. a way for them also to either contribute or participate just to uh, uh, help their you know, fellow uh, neighbors. And, and, and so you on. know, uh, running a health foundation or being mm -hmm. part of a health foundation um, I don't want to miss the point that it's so important for people's own well-being mm -hmm. to be involved in community. Yes. And so Giving Hearts Day, Lend a Hand Up, these are activities to engage people in service to others. Mm -hmm. And it will unleash your great potential to li live a joyful and meaningful life. Wonderful. When we're focused on others rather than ourself, it's super, it's soothing for the soul. Rewarding, yes. It's healing. Mm -hmm. So the smartest businesses that want to have a great workplace culture, they make sure that they're paying attention to, to their team being involved in the community. Mm -hmm. It's the number one culture builder yes. is service to others. Yes. So civic involvement for businesses, that's our next, you know, that's what we're trying to do more of. Mm -hmm. This year, we're going to try to do uh, a major food drives across the state of wow. North Dakota. So we want everyone to participate, children, we want uh, parents, we want schools, we want businesses, we mm -hmm. want, we should end hunger yes. through Giving Hearts Day. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're ordering these red barrels. So there's these giant red barrels that businesses, schools, churches, places in the community will see this red barrel and think, hmm, I'm going to be involved yes. this year. Mm -hmm. They're doing something beyond just dollars for charity. They're also doing service and food and mittens and gloves and yes. diapers and all sorts of things that people need. Yeah. Uh, and that will be a great physical manifestation of it. So I would say my board and my team also like to try things yes <laughs> and and so you surround yourself with people that have that same burning desire to serve others and they come up with other great ideas yes. Yes. so that's been I think one of the greatest things is to listen to these ideas that your teammates have like Gina mm -hmm. you know and my other teammates you know on what should we do to get this so that hundreds of thousands of people are participating and helping each other through through giving hearts day through lend a hand up yep you know let's spread the message on uh, digital devices and our mm. our addiction to, <laughs> yes. to our smartphones yep. you know so those are uh, I don't be shy to ask people for help yes yes absolutely oh my goodness this is a great conversation uh, but we're gonna take a, a short break here when we come back we'll talk to Pat about some of the challenges that uh, you know the organization face uh, under his leadership and how he overcomes it but we'll and, and we will still continue to talk about uh, giving hearts day because this is a big deal in town in the region here so we're gonna talk, continue talking about that we'll be right back We are back. We are the Bison Information Network to do at NDS today. My guest is Pat Trainer, the Executive Director of Dakota Medical Foundation and Impact Foundation. We are talking about Giving Hearts Day, and we, this is the part of the conversation. Usually, we talk about the challenges that you know you face in your line, your line of work. So, it's a great program. But tell me about some of the challenges that you face when it comes to Giving Hearts Day and running an organization like this. Well, I would say, you know, some of the challenges are, are um, attitudinal. Mm -hmm. I, I think that there's a, there's a fear of, of friend raising, mm -hmm. you know, that every charity, everybody at some level thinks that maybe I'm just not big enough to ask for a big gift, mm. you know, and so it's attitudinal. It's we have to, our biggest challenge would be to help people become fearless in their friend raising. So we have to work with them. We coach them. We bring them to trainings. We, I have Irv Inniger, mm -hmm. who's out coaching charities because he's one of the best. Not only was he a very, very winning 
basketball coach, mm -hmm. he was a magnificent friend raiser for NDSU. Yeah. And Irv is a great friend and he's on our team and he has a caseload of 30 or 40 charities mm -hmm. that he helps them set big goals for their organization and get over the fear of failure. Mm -hmm. Because even if you have big goals, you're gonna aim and you're gonna end higher than you would if you just had average goals. Yes. We are called to not be average, we are called to be extraordinary. You know, your parents wanted the very best for you. Absolutely. Your board members want the very best for you and your organization to become incredible at producing an impact in the community. That's why you spend time preparing and mm -hmm. dressing to the nines here, <laughs> because, because you committed to success. Yes. Yes. Sometimes in fundraising, it's difficult to get people's psyche up, where they're fearless in asking people, and you know what, they're gonna set really, really aggressive goals for their organization. They're gonna build a tremendous team. They're gonna look for ways to recruit new donors and, and they're gonna ask for help mm -hmm. in doing that. They're gonna ask volunteers, they're gonna get people fired up. They're gonna be the chief friend raiser and champion for the organization. Sometimes they feel like they have a lonely job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they feel like their mission isn't big enough for, ask, for, for asking for a million dollars. And so what Irv, what Irv tries to do is to help organizations realize they, they've got a bold dream. They mm -hmm. gotta go after it. There is no mission impact without money. Mm -hmm. And so we have to get over that attitudinal fear of asking for major gifts yes. and even asking people. Irv says you should ask seven people a day, whether it's text, email, if you're in friend raising, mm -hmm. you should be asking people for coffee, for connection, for, you should thank them, you know, those that have already given. So we teach recruiting new, retaining, thanking, appreciating, mm -hmm. making people feel the difference that you're making because of your investment in our organization. And then we teach major gifts, that's yes. called reach. Mm -hmm. Recruit, retain, reach, and then how to build the team. Yeah. So I would say the greatest challenge is getting people over their fear of getting out and making ask after ask after ask. I have a wonderful friend raiser and she says, look, if you don't get five rejections in a day, you haven't asked enough people. Wow. That's interesting. <laughs> yes. So she's always asking for money because if you're not asking, why would people give? Yeah, that's a good point. So we need to be telling our story we need to be fired up when we're telling our story. We need to believe in it. And so a story is, what difference are you making in the lives of those you serve? What's the important purpose that young people would have mentors and understand a perspective of what maybe they should go into for a career mm -hmm. with professional lunch? We have to believe in that if we're going to be successful and show here's how we're making a difference in people's lives. Mm -hmm. That's why people want to invest you know, in, in what it is you're doing. So every charity has that story. Here's another one. Uh, St. Gerard's Nursing Home in Hankinson, North Dakota. Sister Mary Louise was their fundraiser. She's in heaven now. She passed away uh, right around, she passed away on the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. She wasn't going to let Hankinson, North Dakota, being a population of 950, be a limitation into her being extremely successful at fundraising. So she raised over 100,000 a year in Giving Hearts Day, every year, consistently, wow. because she wasn't gonna let that, that fear of failure because I'm, in a, I'm, I'm a victim, I'm in a small community. I mean, that's not even a 1,000 counting dogs and cats and kids and bikes and trikes. Yeah. I mean, it's a small community west of Wapaton. That was a little humor there for you. <laughs> okay, wasn't very funny. But the point was she got over that fear yeah. of failure you know, mm -hmm. she, she was fearless and she had a higher power, you know, helping her guide mm -hmm. her way. Of course, she was in the light, but she didn't let geographics or excusivitis. Mm -hmm. You know how people can get excusivitis? Mm -hmm. well, I can't do that. Yeah. That's too much. This isn't right. That's not right. That's the biggest challenge we face mm -hmm. is people's belief systems that they can't do something or they're not good enough to get something. And so we have to conquer that mm -hmm. because we believe everyone's extraordinary, magnificent, and has unlimited potential. So we have to get them over that fear by giving them uh, great skills, 
practice, encouragement. You know, we, we want the very best for them. We are in every charity's quarter, corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we think that they can go much higher than they are mm -hmm. because they're extraordinary individuals. They might just need a better lit path. Mm -hmm. They might need a few more skills. Yeah. So fear of failure, I think, is a big one. And so boards need to be super supportive about having much higher goals and recognizing that you're going to end higher mm -hmm. and you're not going to punish people for not meeting super aggressive goals, yep. but they're going to end really high. Yes. So we need to celebrate <laughs> the bold uh, vision, the journey you know, to extraordinary impact yep. that, that we don't, we aren't here to be average or below average as organizations. And so that is what we have to get people out of that uh, mindset that they're not good enough or they can't achieve enough or they're not as good as so-and-so mm -hmm. or whatever. Not at all. That just limits your whole growth of your organization if yep. we think that. So mm -hmm. that's what we try to do the most of is unleash that great human potential. Wow. That, that's what we're here for. Man, I I think that's uh, I wanted to hear that because I I have to thank Dakota Medical Foundation for really championing professional lunch and supporting us uh, for a while now. You know, you know with what we are doing, and I got to say, sometimes imposter syndrome is really everywhere, right? And that's something that we you know, in some point, I, at least myself, I have to work on that on a regular basis, you know, to fight it. But, you know, uh, just a side note here. I mentioned that to you last week. I'm going to mention it again. Professional Lunch will be part of Giving Hearts Day this year. And we need you, we need you, friends, uh, former guests who have been on Professional Lunch to raise $3,000 for our matching fund. And more want to come on that, but I thought I would mention it because, you know, I know you love what we are doing and we want to help young professionals find mentors, get ideas on how to launch their careers. So, Please support professional lunch. Now we have to follow up with uh, with one thing you say about uh, the challenges. Exclusive ideas. Is that did I say that right? Yes. Exactly. So that's one thing that I think that you know. Again, the show is about helping young professionals find themselves when they are launching their careers. How do you suggest that college students, early career professionals, even high school students, fight these exclusive ideas that they have? Well, first of all, mm -hmm. I think you need to ask about A, who are you surrounding yourself with? Mm -hmm. So surround yourself with people that are successful in their marriage, in their family, mm -hmm. in their business, in their community, and hang out with as many of those people as you possibly can. My mother taught me years ago, you be, and you've heard it before, but mm -hmm. you become the average of those you hang out with the most. Mm -hmm. So if you take the top five people in your life, are those people helping you grow or not? Yeah. You wanna help yourself grow by surrounding yourself with people that help you do that. Yes. So you wanna have, that's the importance of mentors. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed that these people came in my life uh, and did wonderful things for me. And of course I wasn't scared to ask. I, I don't have that fear. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm pretty transparent. Like, I don't know what to do with something. I ask several smarter people than me. Yeah. And that makes me smarter by mm -hmm. surrounding them. So I would say, who do you surround yourself with? And then I would look at your calendar and I would say, I would ask you the question, if I pulled out your calendar and we look through it, that's your focus. So is that in alignment with what you want to be and what you strive to be? Mm -hmm. So if you want to know what you'll be like it's what you in the future it'll be what you're focused on yes so if you're on your phone if you're distracted continuously if you're not you know in a conversation with someone and paying attention to how you can help and learn and grow from that individual interaction if you're busy doing this and distracted scrolling down <laughs> these, these are habits that we yes. need to be need to stamp yeah. out so they distract us we we've never been so distracted as a society and so mm -hmm. i would say check your calendar for what your habits are because your habits are your focus and mm -hmm. your focus will become who you are over yes. time so i would i would say if you want to take control and charge of your life do do a check on what your habits are do you work out do you get 30 minutes of exercise every single day because we need that mm -hmm. what are you doing to your brain how are you improving your intellectual capabilities every year? Are you, are you constantly 
checking that so that you're not entrenched in any one thing because wisdom is knowing that there's so little we actually know. Mm -hmm. There's so little that we actually know that we, we have to commit to learning. So make sure you're committed to learning. That's why podcasts are really good. You can turn them off. You can get 15 minutes. You can do a segment. You're learning. Yes. Meditation. How do you start your day? Do you look on this crazy thing or do you meditate for a little bit on what kind of a person am I going to be today? That's why faith is so important to a lot of people because ultimately it's, you know, where is your house being built? Mm -hmm. Is it on a solid rock or are you on quicksand where you're just going to you're just going to float around throughout life and go with the tides. Mm -hmm. you, can ha you have a rudder. You have a sail. You can set s sail in a direction that you want mm -hmm. by looking and seeing who those people are that, you wanna, that you've seen have, have these attributes that you're thinking are positive for you and your life as a young professional to be yeah. or uh, as someone that's committed to continuously learning. I'm, I'm a work in progress. I say that to everyone. I'm still learning all the time. Yeah. Uh, so I look at my calendar. I make sure I'm focused on the matters of the greatest importance to those I serve. Mm -hmm. My faith, my family, and my community through DMF and Impact and those you know, that are close to that. We, we're, we live, you know, again, in a generous place, but I have to look at that and say, how much time am I spending in those areas that I agreed to that were important I just pull out my calendar and, yeah. I, and I can see where I'm spending my time. So I, I'd invite everyone to, to say, look, who am I hanging out with? Mm -hmm. What am I reading? And then how, how is my calendar filling up? Yep. Is it filling up with the right things or, or not? Or do I even have a calendar when you're a young <laughs> that's kid? A, yeah, that's a good, that's, that's a, You should have a calendar. A good, that's a good point. So this is a, 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 one of the questions I was going to ask you earlier. So what's next for DMF? Because you guys, you know, the, looking at how, how big Giving Hearts Day has become. So what's next? Well, we want to see more than 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. You know, there are 42,000 people giving, 90,000 gifts on Giving Hearts Day. We would like it to be way over 100,000 okay. in the next five years. Mm -hmm. uh, we also would like Lend a Hand Up to be expanded geographically across all of North Dakota and Northwest Minnesota. Same service area as Giving Hearts Day. So mm -hmm. Williston down to Fergus Falls. You know, right now Lend a Hand Up is Cass and Clay County mm -hmm. and Detroit Lakes area. Mm. So we have a broader vision to do that. We want to simplify the process so okay. that it's, it's simple and easy to use on the website, mm -hmm. uh, like GoFundMe. We want people to say, lend a hand up. That's where we're going mm -hmm. because we know that helps us as neighbors helping our neighbor in need. And we know there's a 20% boost and we know those people will help train us and kind of hold our hand yep. through that process. And they don't do that on GoFundMe. Mm. We want to be the local source that pays attention to people and has loving and kind uh, hearted, hearted people that help guide volunteers through the process of raising money for their friends. I see our institute uh, doing um, offering leadership program, Leaders of Light. You know, we live in a dark time where there's a lot of people that don't get along. There's a lot of, of uh, division. There's a lot of hate. You know, we, we want to have build a leadership program for people that want to be uniters not dividers, people that want to build healthy cultures, you know, through business, through nonprofits, and through government, to, to bring people together around some core principles. Uh, fundamentally, love your, all your neighbors, you know, would be a, would be a guidepost. But we, we want to unlock the human potential to do good for one another, and we think leaders are, are a key to that. So we'll unveil in March of 2024 a leadership program okay. uh, along the lines of leading leaders of light. Mm, wow. So man. it's exciting. Those are a few. And then the healthy tech use. Mm -hmm. uh, we want every parent in North Dakota, Northwest Minnesota, and beyond to understand the dangers of, the, of these uh, and to keep them away from children for as long as you possibly can mm -hmm. so that the brain develops in a healthy manner and the social skills and the behavioral uh, skills are there to mm -hmm. cope with life. Yep. And so, we, again, we want more people in humanity rather than in their machine. So we want I to spend this. more time on humanity mm -hmm. than just technology. Yeah. And we, we still love it as a tool. Mm -hmm. We think it's a tremendous it's tool. We're not, it can we're, be useful. But yeah, we're yeah. not negative on the tool itself, mm -hmm. but we are when it's, when it's an addictive uh, device. And so that's why we had 
the woman that wrote Dopamine Nation that mm -hmm. we referred to Dr. earlier, Anna Dr. Anna Lemke, yep. uh, come on our annual summit and present, and you were there, uh, tremendous um, back, scientific background about how we're addicted mm -hmm. to these devices. Wow, this is, this is wonderful. I mean, I, I know this conversation is, it's one of the best conversations I've had uh, you know, on the show. Talking next, about next to Tim Flacco. <laughs> yes, Tim Flacco was good too. <laughs> yes, uh, you know it's it's you know when I whenever I you know I people almost everyone now doing the show know my story. Uh, whenever I see other people that are helping others, that's something that has a very uh, a deep meaning for me because I know what it's like to receive help. Yes. especially when you need it the most. Yes. And Dakota Medical Foundation is doing just that in many different areas on people's life. And I really, I really, I, I, I love the organization. I appreciate what uh, the whole team is doing. And Giving Hearts Day, obviously, it's a, it's, I can't say that enough, it's a big deal for the community in general because yes. most of those nonprofits are tasked with doing some you know things that are extraordinary extraordinary for people in the community so yeah. uh, last question i have for the show and you touched on that earlier is we always ask professionals who come onto the show what advice they have for people that are launching their careers and i know you learn, you talk about that you know looking at the environment a yep. little bit anything else you want to add because that's usually the last question that we have what advice do you have for young professionals um, maybe a student who is watching right now what can they do to launch their careers uh, what i would say is um and i think something that really benefited me uh, that I didn't know was benefiting me until later in life was that I love people, so mm -hmm. I like to be involved. Mm -hmm. So I was just naturally involved in a lot of things. I was involved in my fraternity in college. Mm -hmm. I was involved in the law school. I was involved, um, I was a volunteer for Ducks Unlimited because I like ducks and I like <laughs> to preserve wildlife. Okay. Uh, and, and so I would say be involved. Yeah. I, I say it's the greatest thing, and I just enjoyed it. I didn't know that it, it would somehow benefit my career or whatever, because <laughs> I truly love people. Yeah. And so I don't want to be at home isolated. I, yeah. I wanna, I'm a people person. I love people. Mm -hmm. So to me, being involved was a gift. It was ne it's never a chore. Yeah. Uh, so when I attend an event, I enjoy it because I get to be with people. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that fills me up. And yeah. I would say that, you know, you, again, Every person you meet is an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. Every single person. And you can even learn the story behind the person, yeah. which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. So be a student of, of life you know, and people. Yeah. And, and one way to do that is to be involved. Mm -hmm. So my greatest encouragement is to be involved. And celebrate, celebrate the people around you. Yeah. I am super blessed and, and I can celebrate ev every day my board, my team, my teammates that are no longer at DMF, they're working in other, other places, um, and the, all those that I've worked with and for, all those board members, all those people, celebrate them as people in your life that helped you to, work, to where you are you know, every single day because they helped you become who you are, but none of this happens on its own. Yes. It, it happens together. Yeah. So I would say be a celebrator of people and wow. be involved and be grateful. Wow, this is what I'm, I'm gonna keep this for myself because I have to celebrate the people that are, you know, in this community. Yes. Uh, this community has been really, really nice to me. Well, you're a gift, <laughs> you're a gift to our community. Thank you. Rico, Thank you're you. a tremendous gift. Thank you, yeah, so, and I'm really grateful for everyone in one way or another who support me for me to be here today. And I, I, I don't know if I can say this enough, the community has been really nice in every areas. So I am grateful for that. I'm grateful for Dakota Medical Foundation. Again, thank you. Uh, Pat, any last word? Because this no, is the last I've, few listen, seconds. Listen, I've talked, I've talked too long. We're no, grateful no, for no, you. No. And thanks for dressing up for giving Heart oh, Stay a little bit yeah. today. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Now, you know, this is the part of the conversation usually 
uh, I will say my last line, but this time, because we are part, Professional Lunch is part of Giving Hearts Day this year, I'm counting on new friends and guests who come onto the show uh, to support our efforts because we want to raise $3,000 for our match um, before uh, December 31st. So help us do that and contact me, find me on LinkedIn or Facebook or all the social media that we are on and then reach out so that we can, you, we can, we can talk about that. And I know that I appreciate that. Now, this is the part that I tell you, it's up to you to make today a great day. Have a great day.